What's going on everybody, it's Charles. In this video, we are going to be replacing the fuel filter on this common rail TDI. You guys have been asking me for years to do more TDI stuff, so here we go, we're doing more TDI stuff. Replacing the fuel filter on this generation TDI is pretty straightforward. This is gonna cover roughly 2009 to 2014 Golf Beetle Jetta and A3. Really to do this job, you're only gonna need a couple of tools. You're gonna need a T30 to get the fuel filter lid off, probably a pocket screwdriver or a flat blade screwdriver to open the lid up. And I really like some oil absorbent mats to make sure that we're not getting diesel fuel down in our engine compartment. Saturating your serpentine belt or any of these hoses with diesel fuel can lead to a bad day. And if you got it, go ahead and grab that scan tool. Now the burning question I'm sure you have is, Charles, do we really need to prime that fuel system after doing a filter? And don't worry, we'll solve that mystery towards the end. Now there are a couple of different style filters and filter housings that you need to make sure you pay attention to. These pictures from MyTurboDiesel.com do a really good job showing the three different filter housings, but there's only two different filters that you need to worry about. One of them has one hole at the top, the other one has one hole at the top and one hole at the bottom. The one we're gonna be using today is one hole at the top. If you have the other style or the other style filter housing, you're pretty much gonna follow the same steps. It's just gonna look a little different. Now before you get started taking your filter out, you wanna make sure you don't have any yuck on top of the housing. Take some compressed air or a rag or something and clean it off as best you can. This one looks a little crusty, but at least nothing's gonna fall off into our fuel filter housing. First, we're gonna throw our fender cover over. That way we're not leaning on our headlight or fender. Now you notice this has a handful of hoses up on the top. We don't need to mess with these at all. We can leave them all on, leave the clamps where they are. You do wanna just take a quick look and make sure they're not dry rotted or anything or the clamps aren't loose, but you don't need to take them off to do this as basic maintenance. Next, what I like to do is I like to take these oil absorbent mats and I like to tuck them all around the filter. Like I mentioned earlier, we don't want diesel fuel sloshing all down our engine. And even though we're gonna be extra careful, sometimes it happens. Next, we'll go ahead and take our five T30s out. These shouldn't be very tight. I think the torque spec's like five newton meters or something like that. Now, when you take this last one out, you might get a little burble of fuel coming out, but it shouldn't be really too much. Then we'll take our short flat blade and just kind of rock the housing up. Be careful though. You don't want to just pry one spot and end up damaging the housing. You want to be gentle and kind of work your way around. Go slow here too. If you go fast, you'll sploosh diesel fuel all in your face. Nobody wants that. Now when you pull this up, you're gonna get some fuel. So very carefully and slowly and gently pull this up. Now if you look, this is our filter with the one hole on the top. It's attached to this top housing right here. You can try and pull it all the way up like this, but what I like to do is I like to separate it right here. So I'll go in and I'll grab the filter and I'll just kind of woggle the top part off. Then what I like to do is I like to take this lid, make sure you get any fuel drippy out, and then just move it over to the side like that. Then we can take our filter and move it out. Now it's going to have fuel in it, so let it drain. Don't be in a hurry here. So this filter here actually looks pretty good Let's go ahead and get it out of the way. Once you get that filter out, you wanna look down in the housing and see if you have any sediment or any metal, worst case scenario, metal, or any yuck down in the housing. I'm gonna go ahead and extract all of this diesel fuel out because I do wanna wipe it out. I can see a tiny bit down in there, but it's really not all that bad. We're not looking too bad in here. I'm gonna just take this rag and clean it out. Make sure that we don't leave any yuck behind that we don't need to. Next, before we put our filter back on, we are going to replace our O-ring at the top. So we'll get our old one out of the way. Get a little fresh diesel fuel. Lubricate our new seal. Make sure that seal's pretty well lubricated. You don't wanna end up pinching it. I've seen that happen a lot and it makes a mess. All right, there we go. Now that we got our new seal on, it's time to get our filter in. You'll notice there is a seal up here at the top that goes on this little guy right here. Dip my finger down in there, 
lubricate that seal a little bit. If you have the filter with the hole on the top and on the bottom, I like to lubricate them both. So we'll pull our top up like this, take our filter, slide it on, and then just drop your filter down in. Now, if you didn't drain all the fuel out of this filter housing, if you do this really slow, you shouldn't fill a bunch of fuel out. Since we drained fuel, it's not a big deal. But if you go slow with the thing full of fuel, you'll be totally fine. You might spill a little bit, but not much. Then make sure you don't have any pig mats between your filter lid and housing, and then just rock it down. Now you should kind of feel that seal like snap into place, but you wanna make sure you push it down by hand. Don't use the bolts to run this top piece down. If you do that, you run the risk of pinching the seal. I've also seen guys strip out the canister and then you now have a bolt that won't tighten and you open yourself up to a fuel leak. So just make sure that's down all the way by hand and you have nothing trapped in it. Sometimes these pig mats can get caught between the lid and the canister. Then we will go ahead and get our lid tightened down. The torque spec on these is only five newton meters. So you don't need to go to town on these things. And it's not a bad habit to go across the center kind of like you're tightening a wheel down. Now we got to finish our fuel filter job by priming our fuel system. Because we drained all the fuel out of that housing, we really got to use VCDS to fill it back up. If you didn't do that, most of the time you can do a couple of key cycles to fill that housing up. However, it doesn't always key cycle, especially if you're just pulling the car in, doing the filter and pulling it back out. It may not need to prime the system. So the best way is to use a scan tool to prime the system up. Same thing with OBD11, more or less, or Otis, or any other scan tool, you're gonna follow the similar path to what we're doing. So we're gonna go into Engine Electronics 01. This is also gonna be a good opportunity while this is running to make sure you don't have any fuel leaks without having the car running. Then we're gonna go into basic settings. We're going to go to documented basic settings that can be selected. And we are going to go to fuel supply pump activation. Go ahead and select that. Then we're gonna click on slash off slash next because it's off now. As you see here, this will turn it on. Now this will run for up to three minutes if you just let it go. You also wanna make sure you have fuel in the car, otherwise you can burn up your pump. Usually you don't need to let it run for that long. Usually just within about 20 seconds max, it'll be fine. Sometimes you can hear the tone of the pump under the hood change, and that's usually when I stop. While it's running, go over there and take a look for leaks. If you don't see any, that's good. That means you don't have a super bad problem anyway. We'll go ahead and turn that off. So there we go. Pretty straightforward and easy job, especially if you don't find any damage when you take the filter out. Now, if you do find things like metal or debris or anything like that, we need to go a couple of steps further. And that usually involves pulling the in-tank pump out for inspection and possibly cleaning. That fuel pump's located underneath the back seat like almost all Volkswagens are, so it's pretty easy to get to. If you find metal, uh, you're probably in for a pretty bad and expensive day. When we were doing these repairs under warranty many years ago, this would be a four to $5,000 job because everything fuel touched needed to either be cleaned like the tank or replaced like pretty much everything else. These fuel filters are due every 20,000 miles. You wanna make sure you're on that schedule pretty regularly. That way, if you do run into a minor issue, you can hopefully catch it in time. Also, on the Torag, we fill up at pretty busy fuel stations like a sheet. That way, they're turning through diesel fuel quite regularly. Of course, we'll have the links to everything we use down in the description, including the link to the article we use from myturbodiesel.com showing the different filter housings so you can see exactly which style you have and then get the right filter. We got one more step to do, and that's open the door, start the car, and do our final leak check, but I don't wanna do that with the door shut. So with that, I'm out. Have an awesome day. I'll talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.